safety. There's going to be a fair number of questions about safety on the exam. Again, these are all, um, how should I say, prominent things right now. Quality, safety, inventory, uh, communications. They weren't that way before. They are now. Okay. One thing that the good people who wrote the book want you to know. They want you to know that central service technicians must be responsible for working safely and understanding the hazards. So that makes sense. Okay. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, you need to understand what goes on in your department and what are the things that can harm you, okay? And they break down for us that there are three different types of occupational hazards that affect uh, you, the employee of the sterile processing department, while you're in there. So there are three types of hazards in sterile processing. They are physical, chemical, and biological. physical, chemical, and biological. They don't have to be necessarily in, in that order, but they are those hazards that exist within the department, okay? Now, what are the physical hazards? Well, these are objects that can harm you. Usually, when they talk about physical hazards, in the Department of Sterile Processing, they're talking about heavy objects. Okay, what would be an example of a heavy object? Well, how about a big box of stainless steel surgical instruments? Heavy objects. Big hey, box of so, surgical instruments like that's an example Only because, I don't know if I told you, I, I, to be honest with you it doesn't really have to be even a big box okay it can be a small box everything is incidental over there okay so sometimes even the smallest things can really screw you up okay so you really have to pay close attention when you are lifting things um, from a particular okay. place okay so what do they want you to know about physical hazards or heavy objects all right, all right. That's they want so you to know that in order to avoid injuries in order to avoid injuries you must practice proper body mechanics and you know what i'm going to take these down and we're going to talk about physical so the question is how do you prevent physical injuries due to heavy objects? That's a question. That's a legit question. There is a specific answer to this question. And I'm going to highlight the word injuries too. Okay, so this is the question. Here is the answer. Practice. What do we practice? We practice proper body mechanics.
there's all sorts of stuff that goes into practicing proper body mechanics. Okay. Luckily, they don't get into that uh, on the exam. So we don't really have to talk about it too much. All right. I, I don't want to put stuff, uh, put too much stuff on the board uh, because it's not going to be in the exam because I keep telling you that whatever goes on the board is going to be on the exam. Okay. So I'm not going to discuss it too much and put too many uh, things on the board about this because they're simply not going to be on the exam. But one thing that I should tell you is about the proper lifting techniques. Okay. One thing that you shouldn't do is that you shouldn't lean over to get something. Okay. You should always squat down and, you know, making sure to keep your back straight. Okay. The leverages are simply not there as you're trying to bend down. Don't do that. All right. Uh, there are, there are whole techniques about it. Uh, there's things that people wear, you know, sometimes if you're like working in the warehouse, maybe, you know, it's, it's required to wear some kind of a back support, uh, as you're working in these places. Okay. So in this particular case too, this is something you have to take into full consideration. Now, since we're talking about injuries over here, I'm going to put something over here. W M S D. That's an important acronym to know. So what is a WMSD? Well, it stands for work related musculoskeletal disorder. WMSD. So, this is the most common type of injury, a work-related musculoskeletal disorder. Okay, it doesn't really have a true definition. But for anyone who ever had a lower back pain, okay, from doing some manual labor, you already know what a WMSD is. Okay, for people who work with their hands, like people who used to type a lot, used to develop uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, everybody's heard of that somehow. Okay, some of you may have even had surgery to relieve that condition, you know, whatever the case may be. Okay, as a result of re repetitive tasks that you do over and over again, your body becomes, how should I say, injured from that. Okay, and that's what a WMSD is. It's not one particular disorder. It could be many different things, but it affects your entire body. That's what it's there for. That's what it uh, identifies. Okay, so this what this is what goes in to uh, physical to physical uh, hazards. Okay, now there's one other word that we need to slip in when we're discussing uh, uh, physical hazards. Okay, can I erase this? Did everybody get this? Yes. Okay. In order to avoid WMSD and physical injuries, one thing that people need to practice or develop is something called ergonomics. I'm sure we have heard of this word, especially when it pertains to buying a new car and they keep telling you about the ergonomically designed seats and, you know, you buy these new chairs out there. There's all sorts of fancy stores. There used to be like, I think it's still around. There's a store called Relax the Back or some, some other, uh, you know, some other stores like that. They keep selling this new type of furniture that's supposed to be really good for you. You know, take the strain off of your lower back and everything is ergonomics, ergonomics, ergonomics. Well, you may not have uh, had a true definition of the word ergonomics, but you understand that, hey, ergonomics is something that makes it comfortable for you. Okay. And so with that in mind, they really want you to know what ergonomics actually is. So let me say it a couple of times and then I'll write it down. Okay, ready? Ergonomics. 
Ergonomics is the process of changing work World conditions to reduce just, just like employee same, stress. Like Once again, we the process of changing people. work conditions to reduce employee 14. stress. Ergonomics. Yeah. The process. Wait, Charlie, trust me on this one. Of changing. Work. We are conditions we work the same to as we did last time and reduce and all that. So we're done. We've employee done. stress. What does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. Well, I can take a look as to what they are. Um, you know, but, uh, well, you know, <clears throat> it doesn't really kind of, mean stress uh, like a psychological stress. Yet, it means the stress so on your body. Move them over if it's That's like what it means. So, what does that mean to us? Some people are preparing for it. There is a fair amount of uh, standing on your feet, depending on what part of the department you are in. Just move them okay. over. Okay. In some areas of the department, you, you have to spend a lot of time on your feet. In order for you to protect yourself, because remember, the employer is supposed to provide you with all sorts of interesting things, okay? I got you. To make sure that you have a safe work environment. This is where we are now. At the end of the day, if you don't take charge of okay. your own health and well-being, okay. ain't nobody else going to do it for you. Okay. Okay, so one of the things that you can change about your own environment is to have a most comfortable pair of shoes. Okay, a pair of shoes that will be dedicated to the department. And you cannot skimp on a shoe. Okay, do not buy an off brand. Go for the quality, quality shoe. Okay, you will spend a couple of hundred dollars on a nice pair of sneakers, for example, right? Which is something that I recommend that you do get. All right, something that's going to give you plenty of support and softness where it counts so you can spend time on your feet without hurting your back. Okay, but that's you. But the employer has to in invest when we're talking about ergonomics in something called fatigue resistant flooring. It's one of those things that goes into uh, into ergonomics. Appropriate chairs with good back support, that would be good too, okay? And more importantly, the placement of, uh, of uh, how should I say, items which are most frequently used items which are used more frequently, right? You put them in a place where you don't have to reach for them or bend down to get them. So the items that you use all the time should be within easy reach, okay? Things that run into repetitive motions, right? If you have to bend down to get something all the time, eventually your back is going to give. very powerful statement which is going to appear on the exam does this make sense yeah very good make sure and let me know when it's okay to take it down
Everybody all set with this? Do we understand the concept of physical hazard? Yes. Okay, yes. excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's talk about biological hazard. Okay, as the name implies, the biological hazard revolves around biological entities that can harm us in the workplace. Okay, what exactly are the biological hazards? Well, they would be dirty instruments or patient care equipment. Okay, when we talk about biological hazards, we're talking about soiled instruments. And here is an interesting word that comes in when we're talking about this. When we talk about soiled instruments, we're talking about the word that they invented called bio burden. You can define the word bio burden by first, uh, by first uh, splitting it into several word parts. Bio means biological. And when we talk about biological, we're thinking bacteria, viruses, and so on, right? And the word burden literally means a heavy load. So it's a heavy load of biological items, chunks of human flesh, liquids, and so on and so forth. Now, how does that affect us okay well oftentimes we're dealing with sharp surgical instruments and you know how oftentimes they show up to a department they show up to our department in a bucket covered with wet towels or sometimes water and sometimes all sorts of gunk and junk whatever they don't take their time and trouble even though they should to properly you know prepare the instruments for us or sometimes when they do do that and they cover them with a uh, special type of enzymatic foam okay they they spray foam with uh, with uh, detergents and enzymes so they begin to you know, eat away at the chunks of human flesh and tissues, okay? And you don't see what's under that foam. So, you know, what inexperienced or careless uh, sterile process technicians do, even though they're wearing their personal protective equipment, they're going to go ahead and stick their hands into the bucket and begin to take stuff out and put it into the sink. So, folks, here is a cardinal rule, rule to avoid injuries from biological entities okay I, you know what let me say it first a couple of times then i'll write it down do not stick your hands into anything that you can not see don't stick your hands into anything that you cannot see Now, how do you do that if you're trying to get something out of a bucket filled with instruments? Well, don't take the bucket and dump it out. You're going to damage your instruments that way. What you can do is you can use other implements. We have special tongs that we can use inside of our department, okay? Special grasping instruments. We have plenty of them. 
Here's, for example, one such instrument. Okay, even though this one is not dedicated to anything, you stick that instrument into the bucket and you take other soiled instruments one by one, whatever you can grasp. Okay, here. Oops, I dropped my pair of scissors. But, okay, I'm going to use my grasper here to take out a sharp instrument and I'm not going to do it by hand. Okay, so we use other types of instruments to fish stuff out. Now, here's another word that you see throughout this program, and that's this, aerosol. Aerosol. Okay? Now, everyone has heard of aerosol, but you don't necessarily know what it means. Aerosol means spray. Number one cause of spray is Number one cause of aerosol in sterile processing, I called it CPD here, okay, is brushing of instruments during cleaning. Folks, aerosol is the number one way to spread biological germs, biological whatever entities throughout the place where you work. Number one cause of aerosol and sterile processing is brushing of instruments during cleaning. Now I know some of you heard me talk about this and some of you have not yet, but you will. When brushing the instruments to avoid aerosol, we brush the instruments under water. brush instruments underwater to prevent aerosol. Does this make sense? Yes. Very good. Any questions about this? No. Okay. All right. That's good. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. Okay. Very good. Let's move on. Let's talk about chemical. chemical hazards. You know, it's everything we use in the department for cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization. Um, how should I say? All chemicals that we use for Cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization. They include detergents, disinfectants, 
and sterilants. All these things are chemicals. And all these chemicals are not a natural thing for you, and they can harm you. How do we avoid this? How do we avoid injuries? Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Who? I didn't see him. Okay. No. Most important thing I'm, I is this. I didn't see him today. Of course, I've been sitting in my office all day. Today. Follow O E M I F U. If you're working with any of these chemicals, no you must follow O E M I F U if we are, in order to stay safe. But I doubt that very much. Fred didn't part with them on, on very good terms. OEMIFU, Original Equipment Manufacturers Instructions for Use. There is no better source out, for safety. All right. Does this make sense? Now, OEMIFU is perhaps the most important acronym in the entire program. It's always the default position. We always go to original equipment manufacturer's instructions for use. Okay. Now, aside from that, PPE or personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment is something that we must treat seriously. <laughs> now, I'll tell you a quick story. I mean, listen, uh, I've been in this business for, I don't know, like 30 something years. Yeah, it's it's frightening. Thirty five years I've been in the in the healthcare business, um, working in various fields, and I'm telling you right now, if there is a person who did many many stupid things and lived to talk about it, that's me. I did so many stupid things I can't even begin to tell you. But that's why I can sort of kind of stand here in front of you and tell you these things. Say, hey, I did that. If there was anything stupid that had to be done, uh, it was me, me. And luckily, neither myself nor my patients uh, paid the uh, paid a heavy price for it. And uh, luckily, I just, you know, I was just called stupid on more than one occasion and, and rightfully so, but that's how I learned. Uh, so one of the things that I did, luckily this one wasn't in healthcare, but I decided to one day refinish my bathtub Okay, my bathtub was ugly and etc. And I decided to use special paint to uh, uh, to paint my bathtub to make it beautiful, white and glossy. It looked great on pictures. Well, I didn't have too much money, so I didn't hire a company to do that. So I decided to buy the paint and 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 the special kit to get that done. And um, Decided to read the instructions. Okay, great. Mix the paint this way and then treat the bathtub with special acid and then said caution. Make sure you wear a uh, a uh, respirator, you know, the one, the big one, not a little uh, mask, but those big ones with the, with the filters on the side. And I thought to myself, eh, nah, what the heck? I mean, this is just, you know, it's just overkill. I smelled the acid. I said, well, all right, it doesn't seem that bad. 
how bad could it be? So I started the process. I used the acid on the bathtub. And the instructions, manufacturer's instructions for use were very clear. Make sure you open the windows. Make sure you work in a well-ventilated area. You know, don't do that. If you can't open a window, well, I didn't have a window. So there was nothing to open. So there I was. I didn't bother with a respirator. I didn't want to go back to Home Depot to get it again. Blah, 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 blah. So I decided to do it. In any case, I treated the bathtub with that acid. But I didn't realize that all the toxic fumes came up. I took one breath. Consciousness. And by some, you know, miracle, I didn't fall into the bathtub. If I fell into the bathtub, I would have died for sure. I crawled out. And uh, it was at the time when really no one had cell phones. I crawled out of the bathtub and I lay on the floor trying to catch my breath for about three hours until I came to my senses. Folks, I almost died because I didn't follow OEM IFU. Uh, so I'm telling you right now, when you're dealing with toxic chemicals, okay, and we'll be dealing a lot with them, you must remember that all of these toxic chemicals are also carcinogenic. The word carcinogenic appears in the book in more than one occasion. The word carcinogenic is carcino means cancer. Genic means causing. So a lot of these chemicals, a lot of these chemicals are carcinogenic. You should know what this word is.